Thanks for staying with us uh, on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're taking our first hot topic now. And uh, what is uh, trending as it is, uh, at least uh, to a lot of us, is that REPS has proposed a change from presidential to parliamentary system of government. Don't forget that uh, when we had our independence in 1960, it was the uh, parliamentary government that was handed down to us by our colonial masters, which is uh, the British government. They still practice parliamentary system of government till today. But uh, after a while, maybe after the first six years, we resorted to um, becoming a presidential system of government following after America. And now some 60 House of Reps members are proposing that by 2031, at least, there should be a return or a transition to parliamentary system of government. So we have some guests here to discuss it with us. We have Mr. Joe Femi Dagunro, public policy analyst. Uh, good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Femi Dagunro. Good morning. We also have uh, Mr. Abraham Grid, a public affairs analyst on the show. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you for having me again. Thank good you. Morning. Okay, let's, let's begin with just the basic question. Parliamentary system of government, do you, are you for or against it? Let me begin with Mr. Femi Dagunro. Well, it's not uh, whether I personally for it or for or against it. It's about the people. You know, you said it in your introduction that, uh, you know, this is what's, what's handed over and uh, we changed it. Now we want to change it again, hopefully. Uh, that there's something. The most important thing is not about the system that we run. That is good as well. But we still our money. We still people steal money. Whether it's parliamentary, whether it's elementary, whether it's call it any name. The, the the annoying thing about the kind of government or the system we run is that people go there to steal money. Not everybody, though. You know, the idea of being a politician to make fast money, that is what we should discourage. It is not really the system of pre presidential is quite expensive. Uh, I mean, and that's why you have these kind of problems we are having. Even when you do parliamentary, people will still find a way to inflate uh, budgets, do a lot of all these things. We have to appeal to the heart of Nigerians who are politicians to take it easy and to make sure that they go there to serve the people right from uh, the world. When you have the councillor, you have the chairman, you have the people in the state and at the federal level. Yes, look at what is going on in Germany. Look at what is going on in the UK. Look at everywhere where the practice is. There's a sort of control, but it's the heart of the people. It's the conscience of the people. And our law has to be strengthened because we don't have the law to take care of the consequences of if you do something silly, you face the consequence. Look at what happened. The prime minister, COVID, he had a party. He lied. And you know what? The rest uh, is a uh, history. He was thrown out of the place. And look at the exchequer. A lot of all these things you can even take from UK if you are staying in you if you are want to start uh, with the UK example and look at even in America where the presidential system is being practiced like Donald Trump is facing a lot of charges right now we are not facing the people of this country the politicians are not facing the consequences of their doings and that is the most important thing look at what is going on in some MDA look at even the judiciary the the the, the Supreme Court we we read that there was a kind of uh, 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 financial improprieties there. So if at that level these things are going on even at, at the uh, assembly. So it is not just changing from presidential to parliamentary. It is about our people. It's about the conscience of our people. Look at what is going on about hoarding of foods. And a lot of all these things we can come. The people are fed up. So it is not what you are bringing to them. They will look at it, yes. If truly we want to save costs, if truly we want to think about the people, yes. The parliamentary system will be good for us. But then, who are the people to go in there again and do the same thing they've been doing in presidential? And are you sure that the lawmakers will even approve that? It's a good idea to keep the people busy and a topic that will keep everybody talking again, not looking at what the problem. But this is not the right time because this time around, people are facing inflation, and the people are facing hunger, people are facing a lot of other things. So telling them we want to change from uh, uh, presidential to parliamentary or elementary or 
is here, they'll call it any name. People are not interested right now. People just to find a way to feed themselves and their family. People want to send them, their children to school. They want to live a happy life. So if the people who are the same politicians we go there, they will still practice what they are practicing. It's party party for jungle kind of thing. And that is what is, uh, is, is annoying to the masses of this country. Okay, Mr. Great, uh, let's hear your thoughts as well. Yeah, um, I agree totally with my co-guest. Um, a bad president is the same as a worst uh, prime minister. It doesn't matter what you have. Uh, this topic jumped very quickly at me because I've just uh, submitted in the last few weeks uh, an academic paper on redefining the Nigerian system of governance. And I called it the, the error of a copied uh, democracy. We have to go back to the genesis of, of uh, where we are at, that it is not just that Nigeria were practicing uh, regional, you know, system of governance, or that we have a system uh, of federal uh, of uh, parliamentary in in place. We would have to remember that there was first the error of uh, of the copied democracy when we were forming the country before the independence, where Awolowo had worked with the British, worked on the British systems to ensure that Nigeria, you know, worked or have a proper regional system that will be in form of, you know, parliamentary system. And, you know, just at the eve of that, we have a new, I call them the sons of Oxford, you know, that went with Tinam de Azikue to America and then, you know, you know, jettisoned the proposed uh, uh, agenda from uh, Awolowo to then bring into Nigeria the system that we now practice, which is democracy. Now, I am, you know, I am, I am, I, I am a proponent of good governance, but I have problem with democracy. I always and often call democracy a secrecy of supremacy because there is no country. I haven't seen one country that actually practices, uh, that develop their nation uh, directly with democracy. Democracy seems to have been working in systems where uh, countries have built their system before and then they imbibe democracies to, to, to regulate things. Look, for example, in Nigeria, what Awolowo was proposing at that time. Look at our diversity. Look at uh, the way we, we, we are positioned as a country, how many languages, how many cultures, uh, the differences that we have. And it was, don't forget that it was Awolowo at that time who proposed that we should have, you know, the, the Southeast, South, South, Southwest, South. We now practice, you know, invariably we are Working in that kind of a system now today, you said this person is from the South, South, that person is from the Southwest, but it is not constitutionally so. We just practice it as a verb. So you imagine a situation like the, U like the UK, for example, or like Canada, if Nigeria had gone where we have six prime ministers and one uh, president, but no matter what we have, there is still a problem, a major problem of resource control in Nigeria, where you know, derivation, the resource control, the fiscal budget, there is an endemic system in Nigeria of corruption. Mm -hmm. And that is the core thing. But that can at least, we can begin to have a variance to, to how this system work, that it can work a little bit if we have a parliamentary system, like how you, I will not compare it with the UK. I will say at least like the UAE. In the UAE, you have six or seven different kingdoms and what goes in uh, Dubai may not be the same thing that they are practicing in uh, in Abu Dhabi. They have, you know, each of them have their own constitution, have their, their own laws. That will uh, allow somebody who wants to practice Sharia law that has been there before the formation of Nigeria to continue in their practice. That will allow someone in the West who believe in their uh, uh, in their traditional. Uh, you know, uh, worship or what have you, th that they want to go ahead with that, that would allow us to be able to have a breather. But the system that we have at the moment makes even corruption a lot more per pervasive mm -hmm. because it vests a lot of power on the central. The executive power in Nigeria is the greatest curse on Nigeria. Okay, sir. Um, so from what I can get here, you're clearly for the parliamentary system of government and um, Mr. Jofemi you know, doesn't mind whether it's parliamentary, elementary, tertiary, whatever it is. Um, so that's where we are now. But my question is, what advantages can the parliamentary system of government give us? And is Nigeria even capable of this change in the system of government at this point? 
Yes, if, if you look at it, uh, it will definitely, definitely reduce the cost of governance. Mm. If well practiced, it will reduce the cost of governance. Like, like uh, Abraham was saying, um, the system, we, we give room for, <clears throat> excuse me, we give room for uh, regional democracy, let me put it that way, whereby people will vote for the people they want, and it is the power will not be concentrated too much on the executive, uh, the power will still lie within the people, within the chambers, and we are not going to have this extreme, extreme cost of governance. So that's the one, number one. Number two, I still repeat, you see, corruption is the bane of our society. Uh, stealing, uh, there's no other word for it, stealing of, of government money, people's money, is, the, is one of the major problems we have. It, you see, we have excuses for everything. Look at the other day, they said somebody forged the president's signature uh, to collect <laughs> millions of dollars out of the central bank, for goodness sake. Who is this person? And they said the money was give out cash, given out in cash. So there's no camera to capture the person, there's no way to verify that person. It is in this country, you hear regularly, go Walker, it is in this country we have had as some past uh, snake, uh, you know, a swallow. Money. Money. And, you know, and a lot of running away with them. <laughs> so now somebody said, Oh, I don't know, it is uh, maybe one voodoo, something. Came. So, why all these excuses for goodness sake? And somebody who has a case in court will still leave court and get an injunction and go and contest to be uh, a presidential candidate. So, all these things, you know, you don't really know. And then where to go from? We don't know how is the working, what is the workings of the system? How is it going to benefit the people? And then the funny thing is this, they've taken the people for granted. Four years thereafter, they come back again. The people will still go and vote. So that's why you see most of the young people, they don't really care much about all these things. And you see, they, they, they are concerned and they are fed up with a lot of what's going on. So now parliamentary in theory, we reduce costs. In theory, we give voice to the people at regional level. In theory. But in practice, how do we practice that? I said, unless we begin to have consequences for some of these things we do. You know, so if you don't, how do you do this, uh, what's it called now, this social welfare program? It's a good idea. But if it is the social welfare program we will use in stealing money again, money does not get to the poor, it's getting to the rich, and the rich, the rich are getting richer. So now what do we do? Look at what the charges on the bank, look at the charges. I mean, you can name them. It's, it is just about our people. It's just about conscience, for goodness sake. Let the lawmakers, let them think about the conscience, but let them have a conscience that will, you know, resolve some of this issue. Let them begin to ask questions. Till today, nobody knows exactly what the lawmakers are earning. We just one day we'll just hear that, oh, they want this, they want that, they increase their budget. And what is this budget for? Have you ever seen anywhere in the world where a lawmaker distributes rice and beans? It is not done. And these are the things. Palliative is a word that people do not want to hear again. I think some people if they have the opportunity, they will delete it from the dictionary because it is now becoming something that we just misuse. We use that word carelessly and people are not enjoying the palliatives. So these are the things. I, I am very clear about this, that let's begin to work on the conscience of our people. Let's talk directly to our people and let's begin to have uh, you know, uh, a system whereby we respect. We don't respect the system. We don't respect our people. We don't respect our Ourselves. These are moral issues. These are fundamental issues. Until we approach that, until we begin to see change in all these situations, I think whatever system we operate, we will still have this problem. That is just that is just my conclusion. That this whatever system people are prepared to go for it and say, okay, let's try this again. But are you sure that the, the people in government will sign or will make it happen? I doubt right. because they are benefiting from this presidential system. A lot of people, a few people, are benefiting from it, and they will fight back okay <clears throat> well people will fight back it, there's always a fight back uh, let's also hear your final uh take on this uh mr great you know like i said earlier um a bad prime minister is as bad as uh, a worst president uh but in, uh, my my concern more is in terms of our diversity in terms of how complex as a nation we are there is a way we can make do with what we have at the moment if there is sincerity, if there is, uh, you know, if, if, if there is sincerity, because the current government or the government, almost every government we have had, have been quite punitive in their approach to corruption. You know, America, 
you know, practice what we have. And I, I have an issue with Western culture in that when we copy from them, you know, they give us a, a, a kind of a cacophonous kind of system or policies, and we just run with it. Look at America, for example. America practice, you know, federalism, but they have a caveat. And the caveat is the electoral college. So no matter how, you know, the election goes, there is still a set of people, 530 or there about number of them, who still determines. And you see that in the case of, you know, Al Gore versus, um, uh, is it Bush? You saw that in Hillary Clinton versus Trump, where there was, you know, uh, Hillary won the, the vote by over 2 million people. There's still a set of people who still deserve. So in my own way, in my own thinking, America is not a democratic government. They are lying. For, for me, it's a lie. They have a system that is almost similar or different <laughs> uh, uh, completely to the UK, but is definitely not democracy because there are a few number of people who actually determine the uh, outcome. And if you want to tell me what, if there is anything worse than corruption in Nigeria, it is election. He said this election is extremely toxic, divisive. The election of every four, four years will not make Nigeria a sustainable country. We, we hate each other. We bring bigotry. We bring religion. In fact, after election, sometimes it takes us 10 years to recover from some election. Some people still hate people. There's something I call apoptosis. Apoptosis, which is in biology, where a cell is dying from itself. Nigeria is killing itself from inside itself because somebody, because I voted for somebody else, will go after me looking at my LinkedIn, looking at your businesses, bringing somebody down you know trying to disrupt just because we don't think alike All just right. because and that's what china has eliminated when china reduces the number of election it seems as though china is a capitalist country no but they don't have election to deal with so they went straight into economy nigeria every four four years is destroying nigeria All with right. election okay um uh, well thank you so much mm -hmm. maybe we'll ha we'll propose a a, a presidential election um, system of government, presidential, mm -hmm. <laughs> parliamentary, traditional, all joined together <laughs> to give us a presidential uh, system. But we'd like to thank you, uh, gentlemen, for coming thank on you. the show. We we don't have much time, but one thing is sure: uh, sincerity is what will take us anywhere, no matter what the um, system of government is, and that that much we agree upon. So, Mr. Joe Femi Dagunro, uh, thank you so much for coming. Thank on the you. program and, and mr abraham, abraham great. great thank you, thank you so, so much. much for coming thank you all the best enjoy the day thank, all right. you. thank, thank you. you so we've been talking with joe uh, femi dagunro a public policy analyst and abraham great who was also a public affairs analyst uh, talking about the proposed uh, change or transition from a presidential election or presidential system of government to parliamentary we'll take a break now and when we return we'll be looking at uh, uh, another hot topic. Stay with us.